Welcome to Mega 10. I am Monica. And I am David. A quick reminder, please give us a like, hit the bell, and subscribe to our channel. You can also join the VIP front row to get early access to all our upcoming videos. Thank you for being here and supporting us. Okay, David, this one's going to be interesting. Ripple's acquisition of Palisade is quietly changing how institutions see on-chain liquidity. It's not just another wallet deal, is it? Not at all, Monica. What Ripple did with Palisade is actually one of the most strategic infrastructure moves in the entire digital finance sector. Think of it this way. Ripple started out focused on bank-to-bank -bank corridors, but with Palisade, they've crossed into the world of corporate treasuries, fintechs, and even cloud-based payment orchestration. So the Ripple net network effects are now expanding beyond banks. Palisade's Wallet as a Service and Orchestration API essentially plug Ripple's liquidity into corporate payment systems, right? Exactly. Each time a company uses Palisade's API for treasury payments, that company becomes part of Ripple's liquidity web. Every transaction through those APIs, whether in XRP, USDC, or tokenized BTC, deepens the liquidity pools. It's network expansion through corporate adoption instead of banking partnerships alone. And it's happening inside cloud infrastructure, not legacy banking pipes. Palisade is designed natively for AWS and Google Cloud, which means treasurers can manage digital assets just like they manage databases or compute services. That's where the term liquidity as infrastructure really comes to life. Yes, it's a big conceptual shift. You could call it the AWS moment for liquidity. With Palisade's API-driven setup, a corporate treasury can provision wallets, authorize payments and audit every transaction, all inside the same environment they already use for cloud workloads. Which also means compliance and audit trails are already built in. Palisade is registered with the AMF in France and has gone through pen testing. When you combine that with Ripple's 70 plus global licenses, you get a compliance framework that's almost ready-made for regulators. And this makes multi-jurisdictional oversight much easier. For example, if a corporate treasurer is running payments through AWS in Europe and Google Cloud in Asia, both clouds maintain their own compliance regimes, SOC 2, GDPR, PCI. Ripple and Palisade inherit those standards while still offering blockchain native liquidity. It's fascinating that this cloud-based structure could actually make regulators more comfortable with blockchain payments. The infrastructure feels familiar to them, logs, access control, audits, but underneath, it's powered by XRPL and stablecoin corridors. That familiarity is crucial. Remember, for years, the main concern was governance and key management. Palisade addresses that with MPC, multi-party computation. So no single private key exists in one place. Each transaction is signed by multiple shards across secure enclaves. So, in effect, corporate users gain bank-grade security with blockchain efficiency. It's like combining Ripple's custody vaults with Palisade's high-speed wallets. Right. Ripple even called it an end-to-end -end institutional infrastructure, from long-term storage in Ripple custody to instant settlement via Palisade APIs. Together, they eliminate the gaps that used to exist between custody, payment execution, and reconciliation. Let's dig into the treasury angle. Traditional treasury automation still depends on swift MT messages, batching wires, and manual FX routing. With Palisade, that whole workflow becomes programmable. It does. Instead of creating Swift files, a treasury department can set up workflows in Palisade, approval thresholds, routing policies, currency preferences. When an ERP like SAP triggers a vendor payment, Palisade automatically selects the best route, maybe XRP for speed or USDC for stability, and executes it in seconds. And it all reconciles back into the ERP through external IDs. Every on-chain payment is tagged with the same invoice or purchase order number the company uses internally. That closes the loop. Exactly. The ERP sees a completed transaction, not a blockchain hash. Palisade hides the complexity behind an API. That's how RippleNet quietly evolves into a middleware layer. Corporates don't have to understand ledgers or nodes. They just call a function like send payment. Which means adoption could scale much faster than if Ripple tried to teach every treasurer how to use blockchain. The middleware abstraction makes it plug and play. And the performance metrics are impressive. Palisade's routing engine can settle payments across multiple chains in seconds, evaluating cost, liquidity depth, and network congestion in real time. That's the essence of a programmable liquidity hub. Payments optimized automatically rather than manually. So if one corridor is congested on Ethereum, it could shift to XRPL or even to a tokenized Bitcoin channel. That kind of flexibility wasn't possible in traditional finance. Not at all. Swift routes are static. Palisade makes them dynamic. The system can even split payments, half through XRP, half through a stablecoin, depending on cost curves. That reminds me of what Visa does in card networks, constantly optimizing authorization paths, but here it's liquidity routing at the treasury level. Great comparison. Ripple is positioning itself to be that underlying liquidity layer beneath cloud ecosystems, just as Visa underpins consumer payments. 
let's take a moment for a quick break. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also don't forget there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Thank you, Monica. Back to the integration story. One of the more subtle outcomes is how Palisade bridges on-chain payments with enterprise resource planning systems. You mentioned SAP earlier, but it's the same for Oracle, Workday, or even custom ERP setups. Yes, and it's seamless. The ERP issues a payment request, Palisade interprets it through webhooks, executes the on-chain transaction, and returns a confirmation for reconciliation. The accounting system stays compliant, and finance teams don't have to adjust their workflows. That's what makes it viable for large corporates. They can run pilot programs without overhauling existing systems. Over time, as confidence grows, they'll migrate more transactions to blockchain corridors. And each migration deepens liquidity for Ripple's network, creating that feedback loop of adoption. More transactions mean more stable corridors, which attract more users. The other aspect worth mentioning is how this model aligns with ISO 20022. Ripple has been preparing for that for years, and Palisade extends it into the blockchain domain. Right. ISO 20022 provides structured messaging fields, purpose, counterparties, compliance details, and Palisade can embed blockchain metadata into those same messages. So a corporate payment might carry both the traditional fields and an XRPL transaction hash. That allows banks and regulators to read on-chain transactions through familiar message formats. It's a clever way to merge blockchain and traditional finance semantics. And in doing so, Ripple and Palisade effectively create Rails optionality. A single payment instruction could execute either through Swift or XRPL, whichever is cheaper or faster at the moment, while keeping consistent data structure. Which is transformative for treasury management. Liquidity sourcing becomes just in time. Treasurers don't need to pre-fund accounts across countries. They can draw liquidity on demand. That's the liquidity as infrastructure effect again. It changes how working capital is managed. Instead of idle capital sitting in Nostro accounts, Funds can be tokenized and mobilized only when needed. And that ties into tokenized working capital. Palisade and Ripple enable receivables or payables to be represented as digital tokens. Suppliers could sell tokenized invoices to investors for instant liquidity, while payments settle automatically when due. That could make supply chain financing much more efficient. Instead of waiting 30 or 60 days for payment, suppliers get funded instantly, and the entire process stays transparent on-chain. Another big step forward is the emergence of institutional-grade on-chain accounts payable. Palisade's batch payout tools allow corporates to issue hundreds of payments at once, payroll, vendors, contractors, each governed by approval layers and spending limits. It's an on-chain mirror of traditional accounts payable, but with real-time settlement. The finance team can schedule a batch, sign it through multi-party approvals, and have funds land within minutes. And each leg of the transaction is auditable. The compliance team can trace who approved it, which wallets were used, and how it settled. That's crucial for institutional comfort. Palisade integrates AML and KYT checks through partners like Elliptic and Notabedi. Every cross-chain move triggers real-time screening, ensuring corporate standards are met. Which means CFOs and auditors can review full transaction logs on demand, similar to bank statements, but cryptographically verified. That level of transparency is what finally makes large enterprises comfortable with blockchain infrastructure. They can demonstrate regulatory compliance to the same standard as they do with banking systems. Speaking of standards, Ripple and Palisade's role in regulatory sandboxes is becoming quite influential. Hosting their systems on AWS and Google Cloud opens the door for supervised pilots in different jurisdictions. For example, a financial authority could approve a sandbox where corporates test Ripple-powered cross-border payments under existing cloud compliance frameworks. It's a smoother path to regulatory acceptance because the infrastructure already meets data sovereignty and audit requirements. That convergence between fintech sandboxing and cloud governance is a new paradigm. Regulators can observe real transactions in real time without fearing operational opacity. And it aligns with central bank trends, where institutions explore tokenized deposits and wholesale CBDCs. Palisade's architecture is ready for that. It can route payments across stablecoin networks, CBDCs, and XRPL liquidity all at once. Which positions Ripple as the connective tissue between private and public money systems? Palisade makes that interoperability operationally feasible. Another angle I find intriguing is the possibility of AI-driven payment routing. Palisade's architecture could eventually use machine learning to decide the optimal path for each transaction, based on live feed data and network health. 
Imagine a treasury system that learns over time, avoiding congested chains, predicting fee spikes, or selecting corridors with the best FX rates. That's where on-ledger data meets artificial intelligence for liquidity intelligence. And because Ripple's XRPL provides transparent order books, there's a rich data set to train those algorithms. Let's take a moment for a quick break. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also, don't forget there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Indeed, Monica. It would create self-optimizing liquidity routing. Costs drop, timing improves, and corporates get predictable settlement behavior. Let's go back to security for a moment. Multi-party computation isn't the only layer. Palisade also enforces zero-trust architecture, verifying every API call and user action. Even internal staff can't bypass controls. Yes, every access request is validated independently. The zero trust model means no assumptions of safety inside the perimeter. Every transaction must comply with policy rules, which are cryptographically enforced. And for custody, Ripple's infrastructure provides both cold and warm storage, depending on transaction frequency. That balance between offline vaults and online liquidity ensures resilience against attacks. It's a design that aligns perfectly with institutional custody regulations. Under MICA and similar frameworks, technical and organizational measures are embedded by design. Then there's the insurance layer. Ripple Custody carries institutional insurance coverage, so even in a failure scenario, client assets remain protected. That mirrors the protections expected in traditional finance which is another reason why corporates are willing to experiment. The risk profile is familiar, yet the efficiency is exponentially higher. So to sum up, we're seeing Ripple evolve from a network of corridors into a middleware liquidity layer embedded in cloud ecosystems. Yes, and this gives Ripple a strategic advantage over direct bank integrations. Cloud embedding scales globally, instantly. Banks require one-by-one -one negotiations and compliance audits. Multi-cloud strategy also adds redundancy. One subsidiary can operate on Google Cloud in Asia, while another uses AWS in Europe, both tapping into the same Ripple liquidity pool. And that global reach aligns with corporate multi-cloud adoption. Instead of retrofitting blockchain into banks, Ripple rides the same wave as enterprise IT modernization. There's also the emerging consortium around Ripple and Palisade, partners like Flair, Schumann Financial, and Riva. Some analysts call it a middleware cartel, but it's more like a trust network of interoperable platforms. True, these alliances standardize how liquidity moves between regulated ecosystems. They might coordinate proposals for ISO 20022 extensions or MICA compliance models, effectively setting the blueprint for future payment middleware. If Palisade becomes that orchestration layer linking ERP, custody, and liquidity, it could set the standard architecture for next-generation corporate payments. The blueprint is already visible. Cloud-native wallets, API orchestration, cross-asset liquidity, integrated compliance. Every major fintech or ERP provider will likely follow this model within a few years. And for Ripple, that means XRP becomes not just a speculative asset, but a functional settlement currency for Web3 native business flows. Exactly. As corporates integrate, XRP could serve as the bridge reserve, used internally to balance liquidity between stablecoins, fiat tokens, and CBDCs. Over time, it might act like the commercial base layer for blockchain economies. That's a huge shift in perception from token speculation to settlement utility. And Ripple's acquisitions this year, G Treasury, Rail, Hidden Road, now Palisade, are all pieces of that puzzle. Each one builds another layer of institutional capability, custody, liquidity, treasury analytics, and payment orchestration. Together, they create the full stack Ripple has been aiming for. It feels like the moment when blockchain quietly becomes infrastructure rather than disruption. It integrates into existing systems instead of replacing them. Well put. It's evolution, not revolution. And Palisade is the bridge that allows that evolution to happen within enterprise environments safely and efficiently. Before we wrap up, what should investors and professionals take away from this integration? I'd say the key takeaway is that liquidity infrastructure is shifting from banks to programmable networks embedded in the cloud. Ripple and Palisade are designing the backbone for that transformation. Those watching enterprise adoption should pay attention to how quickly treasuries move from pilots to production. So the future of payments might not be a new banking system. It could be the same 
corporate dashboards running on Ripple's liquidity rails behind the scenes. Precisely. And once it's embedded that deeply, blockchain stops being visible. It just becomes the plumbing of money. Drop comments below and subscribe to our channel. David and I are personas to make content more engaging and relatable. Not legal and financial advice. Do your own research before making any investment decisions. By the way, if you're following Ripple's broader institutional roadmap, keep an eye on upcoming developments in cloud-based treasury automation. Some of those pilots will likely reveal how real-time liquidity and tokenized finance are merging. See you next time.